Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to start um, a Tahsili or SAAT uh, section because it was requested in the comments. So this is the math section and it is from the book called Excellence in SAAT. And if you have this book, you can just follow along. Now let's get started. We're going to start with the first section, which is logic and sets of numbers. So the first question says, if n is a real number, then the counter example for n squared is greater than n is... So, first let's identify, what does counter example mean? Counter example means it has to disapprove it. It has to disapprove it. Meaning, we have to deny the claim. We have to deny the claim. We have to disapprove the claim. So we have to look for the one that doesn't make it right. Let's, let's test it out. So if we have negative 1 is squared, it's going to be 1, which is greater than negative 1. It means it's correct, means it does not disapprove it, which means it's not the answer. Now, uh, let's test out 0. We have 0 squared is just 0. It's greater than 0. No, it's not greater than 0. It means this is the answer. For the video's sake, let's test out the rest. So we have 2 squared is greater than 2, which is right, meaning it's not the answer. 3 squared is greater than 3. It's right. It's not the answer, meaning B is our answer. Now let's move on uh, to question number 2. In the opposite figure, uh, AB bisects uh, angle DAC, then which of the following conclusions is not necessarily true? So it's saying that... AB, AB bisects DAC. And what does bisect mean? And what does bisect mean? Bisect means it divides it into two parts. It divides it into two parts. So it's saying that AB divides DAC, the angle DAC, into two parts. So which of the following is not necessarily true? So A is true. Because we have information, we have enough information that proves that. Uh, B is saying that A and D are collinear, and collinear means it's like passing through the straight, the, like the same line. And uh, it is true because they are passing through the same line, meaning this is not the answer. Um, it's saying that B, A, C is a right angle. I mean, obviously it's not true, but we don't have enough information to prove it's true or it's not. So um, this is the answer. Now let's move on to question number three. So it says the conjunction statement is only true when. The conjunction statement is only true when. So basically we're just looking for the definition and the definition says of the conjunction statement is uh, all, it's only true when all of its components are true. So meaning A is the answer. It's what? It's just the definition. Okay, let's move on to question number four. Question number four says the opposite figure shows number of students successfully passing each subject. The number of students who did not succeed chemistry equals. Okay, so what, what are we looking for? We're looking for the number of students that did not succeed chemistry. So this is pretty simple. The number of students who failed in chemistry or did not succeed is simply this added by this. So we have 20 plus 2, which is simply 22, so our answer is D. Now let's move on to question number 5. It says the conditional statement, if, then, consists of... So, the we know that the conditional statement consists of a hypothesis and a conclusion, because that's simply just the uh, definition of a conditional statement. So our answer is A. Again, here we have a definition. It says the conditional statement P to Q is false if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. We know that this is simply just the definition. So it says, what is the contrapositive for the statement? 
So the statement is if x equals 2, then x squared is equal to 4. What is the contrapositive? And what is contrapositive? The contrapositive is basically when we replace the hypothesis with the conclusion, and then we just deny both of them. So uh, l let's test it out. So we replace the hypothesis with the conclusion. So it's x squared equals 4, and then uh, x equals 2. And then we deny them. So x squared does not equal 4 and x squared does not equal 2. So it's if x squared does not equal 4, then x squared does not equal 2. So our answer is simply B, and it's as simple as that. Now let's move on to question number 8. Question number 8 says, if the sum of measures of two angles is 90 degrees, it's a right angle, then the two angles are complementary. Which of the following statements is the converse of the previous conditional statement? So when we try to find the reverse of the conditional statement, we have to replace the hypothesis by the conclusion. So it's kind of similar to contrapositive, but we do not deny them. So all we have to simply do is, all we have to simply do is replace this by this. We're just kind of switching the spots and let's look for the choice that says that um, the if the two angles are not no this has a not it's not it's not this one aren't same thing if they are then the sum of them isn't same thing so our answer is d because it says if the two angles are complementary uh, then the sum of their measure is 90 degrees, which is just flipping this, uh, the spots, and that's what we're looking for. So our final uh, question is 9, which is the number pi is, and we know that pi is an irrational number, so uh, it is b, simply b. Now, now, if you do have the book, you can scroll down and it does have a little bit of an explanation for each one. Uh, it has an explanation right here for each of the questions and it tries to explain some of them. So like when we talked about the last one for the pi, it explains the, um, the sets of real numbers and the conditional statements, which I think is pretty great. So uh, if you do have the time, please refer uh, back to the page. And um, this is what's work. I hope you guys learned something new. And please, please, please don't hesitate to email me, whizworksyt at gmail.com if you do have any questions or concerns.